Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Wealth TV and this week we're going to discuss who's in your circle of trust. Hey guys, it's Glenn with Wealth TV. Welcome to this week's episode, and I'm going to be discussing who's in your circle of trust. And uh, we're excited. We're coming to you live from the home office just outside of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, where we are enduring a tremendous heat wave. It's about 105 degrees uh, each day here. And as you can see behind me, uh, this is a 3D model of the house that we're building for ourselves and a small group of investors here in Arizona three bedroom, three bath, uh, 2,400 square feet, and it's a tough one when it's 105 degrees out. So, um, But I'm excited to share the concept of who's in your circle of trust. Before I do that, I want to share a book that's had an impact on me. You know, I love books because regardless of where we're at in our lives, whether we are deep in the valley of darkness and we're going through some really tough times, maybe you're going through a divorce, a job loss, health crisis, or what have you, books can really be the shepherd through that, uh, that valley of darkness that I call it and really help you get through that. And if you're manifesting great prosperity and things are going really well in your life, books can really open up your eyes to the bigger picture. And on that note, I want to share a book called More Money Than God. And More Money Than God was uh, written by Sebastian Malaby. And it's a fascinating look at hedge funds. And obviously with Wealth TV, we're discussing all aspects of creating wealth. And uh, it's interesting to note what role that hedge funds play in our economy and how they may affect you. And I just want to read here just briefly the, the intro to More Money Than God and why I bought this book. It says, wealthy, powerful, and potentially dangerous hedge fund moguls uh, have become the it boys of 21st century capitalism. Their weekend mansions are fodder for Vanity Fair photographers, but their potential to cause chaos preoccupied authorities even before the recent financial cataclysm. And it goes on to say that um, more money than God tells the inside story of hedge funds, origins in the 1960s and 70s, their explosive battles with central banks in the 80s and 90s, and finally, their role in the financial crisis of 2007 through 2009. And again, as you see through videos on our channel here, I was certainly wiped out with the financial crisis. I know so many people in my circle of trust that were wiped out. And over 5.3 million people in the United States lost their home through the financial crisis. So it's important to understand and illuminate the role that hedge funds play in that. And uh, so I hope you'll pick up that book. I'm going to be sharing a lot of books with you here on the channel. And briefly, I just want to discuss who's in your circle of trust. And the circle of trust is, is a word that I've uh, developed just for myself. And I've thought a lot about who's in my circle through the years in my journey in life. And it plays a big role in how we manifest prosperity, how we overcome great obstacles in our lives, and a lot of challenges. Who's in your circle of trust can make a big difference. And I've really gone out of my way to get rid of drama in my life. So if I feel like there's someone in my circle that's creating a lot of drama, whether it's a friend or a business associate, then I've really tried to distance myself from that because drama is such a time waster. And speaking of time wasters, and certainly in my business circle of trust, um, I've dealt with time wasters, people that are a lot of talk, but really of little action, where you're trying to forge an alliance with them and trying to develop something, but there's just a lot of time wasting and a, and a lot of inaction. So it's important that if you're trying to you know, build a bridge to the future and a business alliance, that you're really dealing with people not only of great integrity, but people that are of action that really you're in line with. And so it's important to just you know, ask yourself, is this person a time waster? Uh, a word that I like is Debbie Downer. Is this person a Debbie Downer? Are they bringing something positive to my circle? And when we're going through rebuilding, you know, I've had to go through that. I've had to go through the chapter of losing everything in my life and having to rebuild what I call reinvent myself. And it's important that you bring in good people 
uh, in your circle of trust that are really wanting to help you in that process. And then I've got some people in my circle of trust that have done very well, uh, that are rich, that are wealthy, uh, that have had great success. And we can really learn from them. We can emulate them. We can just find out what they're doing that's made them successful. And rather than to be envious or jealous of that, really embrace the people that you know. It could be an aunt, an uncle. It could be a, a friend of a friend. It could be anybody that you know that you meet along your journey in life that has manifested tremendous prosperity or wealth. Learn from them. Ask some questions. Be um, an observer of that. Uh, and that's an important process in building the life that you want for yourself. You know, we live in such a world of debt, and uh, so one of the things I've enjoyed is finding people that are really successful and asking them how they've built their financial um, bridge, if you will, what, what's the components that they've used in their business. And so I've, I know some very successful people, people that own restaurants, people that own companies that employ lots of people, people that have done very well in real estate, and so that's really been a, a big help to me. I've also known people uh, that have played professional baseball that have literally made a couple hundred million dollars. It's a little tough to, to learn from that because they do something exceptional. They hit a baseball at 98 miles an hour coming at their head. Uh, that's not something you and I do on a daily basis. But you can still learn from, from them. Um, and also letting go of ego and learning from the people in your circle of trust that walk through life without a lot of ego. I had a friend say to me one time, you know, Glenn, no one cares. And I was going through a tremendous battle in my life. I was dealing with a health challenge that I thought was going to possibly kill me. And I was dealing with some tremendous stress. I had lost a lot of things after a chapter of tremendous prosperity as a real estate investor and building homes and, and uh, doing construction projects and flipping properties and uh, had a lot of great success and then lost everything and had a real bad health crisis. And I remember a, a friend of mine saying, you know, nobody cares. Nobody cares what you're going through. Nobody cares what you've lost. Nobody cares about the challenges that you're facing. And that was very difficult to hear. But believe it or not, that's really helped me let go of ego. You know, some of you know I've written a few books. But I say to myself, who cares? I'm not worried about who reads my next book. In fact, I'm not too worried about who looks at my next video because I don't make these videos out of ego because uh, I operate from a paradigm first that nobody cares. Now, that's not true totally in our lives because we all have our circle of trust, those people in our lives that do care about us. But by and large, most people don't. You know, they're worried about themselves. And to a degree, we have to be self-serving that way. And when we're trying to self-actualize, which is reaching our, first, uh, our fullest potential, we have to be pretty consumed with our own journey. So it's important if you start out from the paradigm that nobody cares, it can really help let go of ego and not doing things for ego or for attention and then really just focusing in on are you doing the things that you're passionate about. And then from there, uh, great things start to follow. So I've really let go of ego. Um, and that's really served me well, and it's helped me evaluate the people that are in my circle of trust. And a lot of times we have friends that um, are not as supportive as we need them to be, so we really have to ask ourselves who's in my circle of trust as a friend. And, and finally, family. I've had some real issues in my family life, uh, both with my parents and, uh, and other people in my family, and I've had to really let go of a lot of that and uh, ask myself who's in my circle of trust. So just a, just a quick thought about, you know, develop a team. That's really, I think, what life's about. Good friendships, hopefully good personal relationships. And um, if you can't have the family that you want, then put some good friends around you and some good business associates. And then ask yourself, are you surrounding yourself with people that are successful? It's really good oftentimes to be around people that are a lot more successful than you and they can really help bridge you through that gap. And uh, people that you can confide in, people that uh, you can pick up the phone and call. And you know, one of the things I pride myself on is being a really good listener. And oftentimes it's hard to find friends that are really good listeners. So ask yourself, are you a good listener? Because when you put out there those good things, then they tend to come back with you. So that's just a few thoughts on who's in your circle of trust. It'll make a big difference 
towards creating the life and the health that you want. Speaking of that, let me leave you with uh, what my favorite saying is, exercise and eat healthy so you can be wealthy. And until next week, we'll see you here on Wealth TV.